NC Cell dropped the director's preview for Throne of Liberty that gave us a lot of information that we didn't know as well as show us how the things we did know actually work in game. And they managed to do it all in 10 minutes. I know my videos are normally short, but that was pretty impressive to me. The website also got an overhaul with more lore information with some cinematic footage and new screenshots. Although we have no word on the global publishers, the game is still scheduled to release simultaneously around the world in the first half of 2023. Before we jump into the info, if you like MMOs, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into this info. First, they talk about the philosophy behind Throne and Liberty. Throne stands for the battles and competitions we will have, liberty being the freedom to choose how you want to play, and the end represents unity where the walls that divide nationalities and generation gaps mean nothing by their words. They also broke the video into these three sections to drive that point home. They mentioned how they purposely built the game for PC and console because we could do a lot more as players in those spaces, but later they mentioned that you'll also be able to stream it to your phone. I found out they have a software called Purple that you can see on their website that will allow you to do that as well as some other things tied to NC Soft games. The UI has been designed with each platform in mind. In the Liberty section, they jump into the major gameplay elements where pretty much everything made me think, oh, that's cool, and had me excited to play it. They talk about how the world is a fully open world with no boundaries, and to explain this, they talk about how a dungeon could have a main entrance and a starting area with different layers and floors, and if you choose to, you can go straight to the bottom floor, helping or fighting other players that you come across along the way. This isn't the first we heard of open world dungeons in an MMO, but the idea is always cool to hear about. At first, this sounds like a full open PvP system, but we found out later that that isn't the case, and I'll jump into the PvP system a little later. Next, they talk about how weather and environmental changes can have an effect on gameplay, opening or closing off new pathways, for example. The show was seems to be an excavation site flooding due to rain, how certain enemies will come out depending on whether if it's night versus day. They also show how our spells can affect enemies differently, particularly if it's raining, our lightning blasts would turn into chain lightning. All of these environmental changes can cause dynamic events to appear, and they give the hint that if we understand how the world can be affected, we will be able to purposely cause these events to happen. The game, from my understanding, isn't a sandbox MMO, as it does have a story that seems to have a variety of different elements from humor to suspense, which is cool to see. It's also supposed to travel through various points of time, which will be interesting to see how that works because it's an online game with everybody being in the world at the same time. I know story isn't for everyone, but it's nice to know why I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing in the game. In the throne part, they go into more specifics about combat, PvP, classes, and etc. In Throne and Liberty, we won't pick a starting class, but our combat abilities are dictated by what weapon we wield, and we will be able to change up freely while playing. They call it the free class system. It's pretty cool to see more games going this way. The game will have an action combat with what seems to be a lock-on targeting system, and we can equip and switch freely between two different types of weapons. An example they showed was going from daggers to a mage staff. Each weapon will also have what appears to be a counter or block ability that requires good timing. I know this is something we wonder about due to server latency, so I wonder how well it will work, if there will be a large window of opportunity, or if it will be a from software style tightness. We will also be able to combine skill sets of weapons, so maybe get a power boost from one weapon and transfer that over to the, the other. It's something that I wish New World had. For instance, if you had the sword and shield in New World, you can do like a little power boost, and then when you switch weapons, it's not there anymore, it's gone. It doesn't carry over. So I wish it did do that. For PvP, they are using an opt-in system, but not in the way where you just turn on PvP. There will be a competition, like regional events and boss raids, that will take place in certain areas of the map. That section will be flagged so people know that it has been switched to a PvP zone. All this will be planned ahead of time so it won't just spring up on us. We will be able to look at a schedule on a calendar and see where the PvP zones will be and what times they will be active, allowing us to plan ahead. It looks like these events will also give some pretty unique looking weapons as well. For guilds, there is a guild war system that involves these objects out in the field that only guilds can mess with called Possession Stones. They're the Blessing Stone and the Dimension Stone. Getting these stones will enhance the capabilities of guilds and allow them to get raw materials. The translated closed caption says they are necessary, but we don't know what they are necessary for. 
guilds are going to have to battle over these stones. And it sounds like the stones may move around or respawn at some point because they say that guilds will have to pay attention to the landscape that they are on and set up defensive perimeters or strategize a plan of attack based on that. An example of that verticality that is in the game is during a part where you see some people on a cliff shooting down at people at the top of stairs who are shooting at people who are at the bottom of stairs. It's pretty wild. In the and section, they talk about the unique UI and UX experience depending on the different devices that it's played on and how the facial animations are super expressive, but the most standout part of this section to me was the character creation. They didn't show if there would be multiple races that we could play as. From what I could tell, everyone looked human in the trailer. What blew my mind is that you'll be able to use a picture of yourself that the AI will look at and turn your in-game character into. So that's pretty cool. If you were trying to make a character look like you in other creators, but maybe fell a little short, you should actually be able to do it in Throne of Liberty. They didn't go into any details about professions or life skills. So hopefully that is something that is also in the game. We also don't know what monetization will be like yet. They could be going the Final Fantasy XIV route with testing and just keeping it all internal because you've heard nothing about a beta test or anything like that. There is a lot that NCSoft is keeping close to their chest, but I'll try to keep you guys up to date with more information, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.